Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Katie, I'm an artist and illustrator, and every two weeks I do a recap of the daily art challenge which I've started and I'm sharing every day on Instagram. Today I'm recapping weeks 20 and 21. At the end of these couple of weeks I did experience burnout and I was struggling with my creativity, so you'll see that in the pieces that I shared today. But if you want to see any of the others from all my other weeks then there's a playlist which I'll link down below and we're just going to jump right in. Day 115 was in the new Etcher Perfect Sketchbook which I used for day 114 but I actually started this on a live stream with my patrons and then I finished it off on the Sunday which was day 115 because I didn't quite manage to finish it and it looks like this. And this was when I was still getting used to the cold press paper, which is obviously very textured. And I definitely struggled putting in the details on this one. It feels a little bit unfinished to me simply because I didn't add my usual details layer with the coloured pencils. I added on a little bit in the water and I used a Posca white paint marker for the snow details on the hedges, which definitely helped finish it off a little bit. I really like the muted tones of this one and I really am pleased with the red. I think it gives a really nice wintry snow scene and still adds that pop of colour which it needs. So this was still a good experiment because this was obviously the first one I did in this sketchbook and this was the second so I was still getting used to the paper and it still taught me a lot about how I'm going to use this sketchbook going forward so definitely a good one to start the week. If you just watched my latest video which explains the changes I'm now making in my daily challenge because of the way that I was feeling at the end of these two weeks, you'll know that I mentioned like the bird pieces which I did when I wasn't very creative or feeling very inspired and day 116 is like the perfect example of this. So this is the piece that I did and it's nice, it's fine, it's a little magpie on a pink background and this did incredibly well on Twitter. It did okay on Instagram but for some reason it really took off on Twitter and I think it was like one of my first more popular tweets. But this was definitely done from a place of I need to do something for the daily challenge and it needs to be quick. So although this is cute and I do like it, it's, it's a nice little size, I only did it because I needed to create a piece for the daily art challenge. So with that in mind it isn't successful for me but I think considering I wasn't inspired, I think it has come out really well. You'll see at the end of this week I did do another one which was similar to this and I don't think that one was as successful. But this is like the catalyst for me realising that I need to change, so at least it taught me that. Day 117 is in my A5 Talons sketchbook and I was definitely struggling. Obviously I did that one quickly the previous day and this day I still wasn't feeling inspired. Sometimes it comes and goes each day, um, but I really struggled with this one and I didn't really want to post it. Again, I was feeling that perfectionism and um, I don't feel like this is very good. This is just a 10 minute map crunch study which I did. Usually when I'm lacking inspiration I do go on map crunch and I paint the scene that I see. And that's what I did here, I gave myself 10 minutes, which again, the timing usually helps, not only to help me create the daily art if I'm feeling a little bit stuck, but just to keep me loose and creative. But this one I think is too loose. It feels very messy and dirty. I think like the palette is quite dirty. It was a really nice like sunset scene, so that's why I added in the yellow. And I like the pop of purple, but I just think it's clearly messy. I mean, obviously I did it in 10 minutes and considering, I think it's all right. You can obviously tell what everything is. You, I really like the characters of the penguins down here. Um, but to me, this is just a little bit too messy and I clearly wasn't in the zone. I was just like making these really random marks and I think this is on the wrong side of loose. And this was done with gouache and some colored pencils and a little bit of neo colour, so my usual three, so it wasn't like totally out of my comfort zone, but yeah, I'm not massively happy with the result of this one. For day 118, I stayed in my A5 Royal Talon sketchbook and created these birds, and I am really pleased with how these came out. 
This was another one done when I wasn't feeling very inspired, but I think this one actually came out really nicely and I really like the colours. It's a very vibrant, bold sketchbook piece. Um, what I did was I put the gouache shapes down first and then I added on all the details over the top. So some of the birds like are a little bit wonky because I didn't sketch first, I just put down the shapes with the gouache paint first. And they definitely have a lot of character. I'm really glad I added on like the little white details in the eyes for some of them because some of them were um, just black at first so I just used a white gel pen just to like really make them pop and I think that works well. I really like some of the paint effects on like the black head of this bird and yeah I'm pleased with this one it didn't take very long it was obviously very loose and I really like the characters that have come through from the birds and the expressions and I think this one was successful on a day where I obviously wasn't feeling it. Day 119 I was feeling a little bit more inspired and I just went on Google Maps and dropped my pin randomly and this is what I created. This is in my A4 Royal Talent sketchbook and I really like this one because I changed the colours completely. I approach this in the same way I would with my normal landscapes, except I really bumped up the saturation and used colours I wouldn't normally do. So obviously, like, in the Google Maps scene, it was, like, blue mountains and, like, yellow and green fields and lots of browns and neutrals, which is what I would normally paint. But for this one, I did push myself to use brighter colours and it feels kind of retro in a way because they are so bright, like, kind of 80s almost with the um, purple and green and I really like how this came out but the one thing I don't like is the composition I think there's too much sky and um, there's obviously nothing going on in the sky either which doesn't help and I think it would be better if this was just all a bit pushed up a little bit and maybe some focus like maybe a bush down here in the foreground but I am pleased with it this was done with some Tombos on top of gouache and then some Neocolor pastels and Prismacolor pencils as well I think exploring different colours and using different colour palettes is something I want to explore more and this was a really like positive experience of trying something new. Day 120 was a Friday and by the time the Friday was around I always find myself a little bit more burnt out and a little bit struggling for inspiration anyway. And this is the bird piece which I mentioned earlier when I was doing the magpie that was a really quick one because I ran out of time and I needed something and I don't think this one worked out as well. I was thinking of creating a little series with the magpie and doing it in this way like I did previously in the daily art challenge with the plants. But those ones definitely don't come from a place of inspiration, they come from a place of I need to do something quick and easy and I know it will do reasonably well on social media. And I don't like that I approach the daily challenge in that way, which is why I'm changing things and if you want to know more about that then I'll leave a link up to my latest video explaining how I'm changing it and why up in the cards and down below. And this kind of was just the crux of why I want to change. Um, I'm not happy with this. I don't think it was successful at all. It's kind of Christmassy, like obviously um, robins are wintry birds and I really like robins, but I just don't think I did it justice in this piece. And whenever I look at this, I know it was a rushed one just because I had to. For week 21, usually I do six pieces in a week, but I needed an extra day. Um, Sunday was the boxing day and I spent the day with my family and I just really felt like I needed a rest day. And over the Christmas break, I definitely felt like I needed to change things up and this was where the ball started rolling in changing my approach. So this week in between Christmas and New Year was when I really like fleshed it out in my head about what I want to change. But this week was a little bit like in the middle between wanting to change things completely but my head wanted to wait till New Year and being able to explain what I was changing. So this week kind of has a little mix of inspiration and also like my usual safety net of my daily art challenge. So for day 21 I created this um, little flowering gouache. 
This one was really quick and it's really small. I just used a scrap piece of paper I found on my desk. I really like how dainty this is. It feels a little bit muted, but it still feels very natural. And this one I created quickly. It wasn't inspired at all, but I do think that there's something in this that I really like. It's not super bold. I didn't feel like it needed a background or anything, so I just kept it like this. And I do think it's sweet and I do like this one as a little botanical study. For day 122, I went back into my A5 sketchbook and I created this painting of a frog and I don't think it was very successful. I edited it quite a lot to go on Instagram and like cropped it to this side, but this is how the sketchbook page is looking. Obviously you'll be able to tell this is very different to my usual stuff. I really pushed myself in using a different colour palette that was very pastel, greens and pinks and definitely not something I usually use. And I don't like it, it feels like it needs more, but because it's so different for me I didn't know how to finish it. To me this feels very unfinished and it needs like a layer of details, but because this is like in the foreground and this in the background is very like far away, I didn't know how to approach the details here, which I think needs it, in a way that still looks like it's in the background. So I didn't, I just left it as it is. And I don't like this page, I do like I do like the colour palette and I really love the little frog's expression but yeah to me this one was kind of a fail but at least I did use something new. I used a new colour palette and I did learn a lot from this one. I just wish I knew how to finish it. Day 123 was more in the style of my new approach to the challenge where I wanted to try something new and follow my little spark of inspiration. And on this day I got my inspiration from some typography on a hot chocolate box. So I received this for Christmas and I really loved the typography on there and I really love like hand-drawn type and it definitely got me into typography in general years and years ago when I was at university and this felt very reminiscent of that where I like copied little bits of type that I liked and put them in my sketchbook. So this feels quite nostalgic for me and I do like how it came out. This unsurprisingly didn't do that well on Instagram, but it did feel like I was being more true to myself in terms of following my inspiration. And I really like it. I really love this type with the little flourishes and I do like the colour palette on this page. It feels like a proper sketchbook page, which I know a lot of paintings in this sketchbook don't. This feels more like an exploration in something that caught my eye and so I am pleased with this one. If you've seen my other videos and seen some of my daily art challenge pieces, you'll know I started doing these tiny little collage stamps and I wanted to do one more in the series just to finish it off and have four in total. So I created this little ice skating scene and I really like it. I think it's really cute. I like the little scarf, the little red hat. And once I'd finished this, it felt like it needed something else, so Mitch had the idea of putting in these coloured lights, and I think that finishes it off really, really nicely. This was very fiddly to do. As with my other stamps, I kept challenging myself to do more and more collage bits, so like the little lights I could have done with paint, but I chose to use collage, and these are little tiny bits of my paint palette sheets cut up. I am pleased with how this one came out, but Again, it didn't come from inspiration, it just came from wanting to finish the series. But having said that, I really enjoyed trying out collage, and although I don't think I'll ex practice it any more in this scale, it's definitely something I want to try again in my daily art challenge. The last piece for week 21 and day 125, which was New Year's Eve, I created these two pieces in my A5 sketchbook. And this was a painting challenge I set for myself. It's kind of like a really bad spot the difference, but I used two different techniques for these. This one is how I normally paint, and then this one was painted upside down. So this was really tricky to get my head around. You can see I messed up on the perspective and like not getting the right way for the boat because obviously like you really have to use your head to work out where the line should be, especially on a view like this where 
it is you know pushed into the background and obviously doing it upside down is all opposite so although I tried um, I didn't get it right um, especially on the top of the boat but I really think that adds a charm and character to this piece obviously this side is more saturated but that's just the way I mix the paints and you can see that they're obviously the same thing but it was a really good experiment in trying to loosen up and I think working upside down definitely switches off my brain on trying to make things perfect and I think that does come through so I'm really pleased I tried this and I think it's something I want to explore a little bit more as well. So those are all the pieces that I created for weeks 20 and 21 of the Daily Art Challenge and I'm really excited now that I've found a way to find my inspiration and keep moving forward in a way that I think will help grow me as an artist. And like I said before, there's a whole video explaining my changes and why and I'll pop that down below. Out of all of these ones, I think my favourite is the birds in the sketchbook. I just really like the characters and how loose that one came out and also how vibrant it is in my sketchbook. But I'd love to know which one was your favourites down below in the comments. Obviously week 20 felt very uninspired and I'm not sure if that would have come across on my Instagram grid but I'm really hoping going forward you'll be able to see the fun and creativity that I can achieve in my daily challenge by just trying to find my fun with it and not just posting because I feel like I should and posting something which I feel like will do well. So I hope you'll join me next time when I do my next recap for the daily art challenge and if you want to follow me and keep up with it daily then the best place to do that is on my Instagram where I post them in real time. If you're new to my channel then I'll pop a link to the playlist for the rest of the daily art challenges down below but there's also lots of videos on journaling and creativity in general on my channel and there'll be a new journaling video coming this Sunday as well. So thank you so much for watching, can't wait to hear what you think down below, and I will see you next time. See you later. Bye.